the, the, the two of the hardest burdens that human beings live with are fear and sadness. Fear and grief. Those are the two heaviest burdens that human beings live with in this life. As a matter of fact, when Allah sent Adam السلام, to the earth, He told him that when He gives His guidance, فَمَن تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Whoever follows my guidance, they're going to be able to combat fear and, and sadness, essentially. In other words, Allah knew that in the story of humanity from Adam السلام, to the last human being that's going to walk on this earth, every one of them is going to have to struggle with fear and they're going to have to struggle with sadness. Now what are these two things? Fear is about what's going to happen in the future. Fear is about, am I going to lose my job? Is, is what's going to happen to mom? What's going to happen to my family? What's, what are they going to say? What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen with my exam? What's going to happen with my immigration? What's going to happen with this and what's going to happen with that? These fears about what's going to happen in the next few hours or in the next few days or in the year from now or in the future. These fears are small and big and they're all the time. They're, they're a part of us. You're, you wake up afraid. You're, you're afraid you're going to be late to work. You know? You're afraid that you're, you, know, you forgot about some task that you had to do or the time's running out. Small fears, big fears. But fear is a constant part of life. It's always there. And what you're afraid of, let's say a student is afraid of failing an exam. Up until the moments of the exam, there's fear, fear, the heart is pounding. And they take the exam. And then unfortunately, they get the result that they failed. And when they fail, there's no more fear. There's now sadness. I mean, there's fear of what your dad's going to do to you, but there's sadness mostly. Right? Now there's sadness about what happened already. So fear is about the future and sadness is about the past. What, what already took place in the past. And just because it's in the past, you don't get to tell someone, well, it's in the past, get over it. It's done now. You, can move, you should move on with your life. No, you and I are not in any position to tell anyone that they, are no, longer, they no longer have the right to feel sad anymore. Our Messenger وسلم, continued to feel the sadness of the absence of Khadija anha for years. For years. Feeling sad is not a sign that you don't have enough faith. That's a, I mean, he has the greatest faith of all, and yet he carries sadness. Yaqub lost his son Yusuf. And he carries a great amount of sadness. So much so that he cries so much, his eyes turn white. His eyes turn white out of sadness. But that's part of, that doesn't mean he doesn't have faith in Allah. He doesn't ha actually have that. And as a matter of fact, he would only cry of his fear and uh, uh, cry of his grief and his sadness to Allah. <inaudible> I've given khubbah to you about that before. But today I want to talk to you about an extreme case of fear and sadness first. And that's the mother of Musa salam. I can't think of a more extreme case of a woman who had to do something so incredibly unthinkable. She knows that any minute from now, soldiers are going to break her door and they're going to kill her baby in front of her own eyes. For a mother to imagine the murder of her own newborn baby. Unthinkable. And the only idea she had that Allah put in her is you need to put your child in a basket and put that basket, alqihi fil yam, throw it into the river. It's not even nicely, gently put it into the river. Ilqa is to throw. Now when you throw something in a river, the river is moving water. When you throw something in a, in a river, it can flip. It's also the case that a basket may not necessarily float. It may get water inside. It may hit a rock. There are animals inside the water. There are all kinds of things. As a matter of fact, I often, when I used to teach the story a long time ago, I used to give the example, when you see a child go even two feet near a swimming pool, not even the deep end, the shallow end, a mother will go crazy. She'll drop everything and push people out of the way and grab her baby. There are women that give their, their, their babies a bath, you know, in the tub, and they put the water this little. And the baby's like, come on, no, 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 too dangerous, this much is too, you'll drown. I can't even fit my head in, no, 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 not gonna let you, there's a fear. And this mother has to take her newborn. He can't even crawl yet. He can't even do that yet. And she has to throw this thing into the water. Can you imagine the kind of fear this woman has in her heart when she does that? And when she does that, she can't even look at it. 
and can't even cry and scream, my baby, my baby, she can't do that. Because if she does that, the soldiers will know one survived. And they'll go after him and kill him. So she has to not even be, even if she looks, she has to look from the side. And then this water is not standing still, it's moving. So this basket is slipping away from her sight to the point where she doesn't even know what happened to it. She has no idea what's happened to it. And now she's living with this incredible, overwhelming sadness. What have I just done? What's going to happen to my baby? You know? And in those moments, Allah Azza wa Jal told her, لا تخافي ولا تحزني Don't be afraid. Don't feel sadness. And even though she still felt afraid, and she still felt sadness, what we're learning in these ayat is Allah will help you overcome not being drowned by fear and not being drowned by sadness. He can let you navigate those two feelings. Those two feelings are very powerful. They're enough to drive someone mad. They're enough to drive someone to the point where they don't want to live anymore. It can be that powerful. And yet Allah can give you the strength to overcome what you and I don't have the strength to overcome. This mother, like no other mother, could stand doing that and, and survive. So Allah says, وَأَصْبَحَ فُعَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى فَارِغًا Musa's mother's heart was, you can think of the imagery as it was bleeding out. It was emptying out. It's like her heart was exploding. In كَادَتْ لَتُبْدِي بِهِ She was on the verge of just let, screaming out, that's my baby, I want my baby back. She was on the very verge of it, she couldn't hold it in. لَوْلَا أَرَّبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهَا had we not tied her heart up, like literally something's about to shatter and leak, and Allah says He, like a rope, tied it up and held it in place. What are we learning? We're actually learning that you and I are not capable of controlling our emotions until Allah gives us the strength to do so. The situation didn't change. The baby didn't start flying instead of floating in the water. The reality didn't change. But her heart changed. Her heart was strengthened by divine intervention from Allah Himself. And she's not a prophet. What we're learning in these ayat is that Allah will give you and me a strength to our hearts that will be, will be able to overcome the most powerful fear and the most powerful sadness. The deepest, deepest kind of sadness. He'll make us strong enough, not that those things will go away, but you'll be strong enough to go through it. You won't collapse. Your heart won't fall apart. 